Okay guys and welcome to the first part of 3 in a series about tuning your Unraid server for maximum performance. This series addresses general server tuning, docker container tuning and virtual machine tuning. Although I've split this topic into 3 videos, it's important not to skip to the later videos as all the parts will have things in them about server, docker containers and VMs, even though some sections lean more to one or another. So let's get started. Right, so fine tuning the server. Hmm, where do we start? Now, I'm sure most of you are mainly interested in either fine tuning a VM or a Docker container. You want the best gaming performance or you want to be able to transcode lots of streams with Plex. But we're going to go deeper than that. We must look at the big picture. Whatever our goal, we have to look at the server as a whole. Now, nothing runs on its own. One thing can affect another. So for the best performance, we have to take all factors into consideration. Now, unfortunately, it's not a simple plug-in and configure formula, as each environment and setup is different. Server tuning is as much an art as it is a science. What works on one server may not work on another. Yep, even when the goals are the same. So I'll be showing you some examples of this on my servers. In this video, you'll see some examples on two different servers. One, a quad-core i7-6700 server with 32 gigs of RAM. And the other, a 14-core Xeon 2690 with 64 gigs of RAM. OK, so the first thing to do is look at our server and what it does. We should have it set up and working already. Unless everything is working and set up, there's just no point tuning the server. Now, if you were building a race car, you wouldn't tune the engine before you'd put the wheels on. So once we have everything up and running, we need to break down what's on the server and the resources we have to use. Unraid, as we know, has three sides to it. A NAS, Docker containers and virtual machines. So first let's look at the NAS side. So that has all of our shares. And if we have a cache drive, some of these will be on the cache and some of them on the array and some of them on both. Now we need to know this because having the array working well is the cornerstone to the server working well. All of our data is somewhere on the disk we have, whether it's a movie, a game, a docker container or a VM, so we want the array to be well thought out and optimised as best we can. We need to think about what disk will be read and written to, and how often during normal use. For example, normally on the cache drive you have VM images, your docker image and it's also the first place data is written to before being moved to the parity protected array. So you need to think, are you the type of person that's downloading 24-7? Are there multiple torrents going up and down to your server? This could theoretically affect the I.O. speed on a VM running at the same time. You can only find out this kind of thing by testing. For example, fire up a VM and use it how you normally would then deliberately download a bunch of torrents or make lots of writes to the cache and see if it affects your VM. So once tested you'll know if this kind of thing will be a problem. If it is, ask yourself is it likely to happen a lot? Are you going to be gaming on a VM whilst downloading a lot? You know, can you live with this? If you can't, well you've got a few choices. Use an unassigned drive to host your VDisks or use an unassigned drive to download onto. But for most people, an SSD cache will be sufficient for all duties. Right, so let's start tweaking the server. Um, what we can do is we can install a few plugins and these are the ones I suggest that you install first. The first one being fix common problems and then the Dynamics cache directories and then CA Auto Turbo Write Mode and then the Dynamics SSD Trim and finally the Tips and Tweaks plugin. Okay, so then in community applications, just type in fix and search for the plugin. Click onto the hard drive symbol to install. Then once installed, click done. Then click on the icon. And then to configure the plugin, click on the kind of blue circle there. The program will then scan your system and notify you of any errors it finds. Then you can easily just fix those errors and make your server run better. Then after you've fixed each error, just run the program again and let it scan until you can see that it says you've got no errors found. 
Okay, so next plugin is the Cache Directories plugin. This time do a search for Cache and then scroll down to Dynamics Cache Directories, click on it, install it and then go to the settings. You'll see mine's already enabled but yours will be disabled by default so click on enabled. Leave suspend during mover process as it is and everything else is default. At the bottom here you'll see excluded and included folders where you can include or exclude various folders from the plugin. But if you do this make sure you don't both include and exclude folders just either one or the other. And when you've set it up just click apply then done. And you should find that this plugin will make browsing shares a little bit faster. Okay, so next, auto turbo write mode. Just do a search for turbo. And again, as before, just install the plugin, then go to the settings. Then make sure enable automatic turbo mode is set for yes. And then below, we can set how many disks out of our array are allowed to be spun down before invoking turbo write mode. And I have four data drives in my array, so I set mine here to one. So there has to be three of my drives spun up in order to enable turbo write. And in this section at the bottom here, we can enable a schedule if we want to. So we can disable this function, say during the night time, because there's really no point in having the turbo write going on at night while we're sleeping, because we don't really care about fast write speeds at that time. So just set that to how you want it, then click apply and done. And the next plugin, the Dynamics SSD trim plugin, obviously only install if you have an SSD drive. So just do a search for trim. Uh, once you've found the plugin, just install it and then go across to the settings. And you'll see this brings us to the scheduler settings on the settings page of the Unraid GUI. But now there's an additional schedule for trim at the bottom. I set mine to daily. So then just apply the settings and click on to done. Right, okay, so now we're getting to the fun stuff. What we're going to do is install my favourite Tweaks plugin, which, well, lives up to its name, Tips and Tweaks. Okay, so just do a search for Tips. And install the plugin. And then once installed, go to the settings of the plugin. And then if we scroll down, you'll see various options here that we can, we can use. Um, we will keep coming back to this plugin. Um, but for the moment, you can see here on Intel CPUs that the CPU scaling governor is set for power save and the Intel Turbo Boost is set for none. So in my opinion, this is one of the best tweaks you can do is actually changing this. But before we do, let's just run a test on one of the VMs and see what pass mark score we get with this set how it is. Right. Okay, so first this test is going to be done on my main server, which is a Xeon 2690 and I've assigned four hyperthreaded cores to this VM. And so the basic score we're getting is 7,940. Okay, so let's do another test, but this time we'll change the CPU scaling governor to performance. Okay, so now we're getting 8,040, so that's a 100 points increase. Right, so now what we'll do is we'll set the Intel enable turbo boost to yes. And now you can see why I love this plugin so much, because it's bumped my performance up over a thousand points to 9,065. And you can see also that the original single core speed was 1,618, and now it's 1,699. Okay, so that's like a great speed increase. So let's run just the same tests again, but this time on a, on a quad core CPU using the 6700. I won't run through all of the tests, I'll just show you the results. Okay, so again a good increase on the 6700, a 7.5% increase. The CPU mark on the VM is actually a little better than the average pass mark score for that CPU. So what if you have an AMD CPU? Well, unfortunately at present I don't actually have an AMD test platform. But I am saving to build a Ryzen server now that Unraid 6.4 has a Linux kernel that supports Ryzen. So I'll be posting a video when I come to build that server. So for this video, I was unable to do any AMD tests. But looking at some results online that people have done on testing CPU governor with Linux and Ryzen, the results look promising. So please, if you have an AMD CPU and you change your governor, then please post in the comments below to let other users know your experience. So those are some things you can try to get more performance out of the server. The CPU performance increases especially will be good for both VMs and Docker containers. Now before we move on 
on to more tweaks from here, we have to look at the server as a whole now, especially when it comes to running both VMs and Docker containers together. So in part 2, amongst other things, we'll tune our Docker containers pinning them whilst keeping VMs and other processes in mind. If you like this video then please hit like, if you like the channel then please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next part.